am the one, I am the one Everybody talk My pawns on my echo wood, then I love it gun I don't need a stun, cause I am the one Back to the channel and a happy, happy, happy new year to all of you. Love for the love that you guys have showed me in 2022, 2023. It's probably going to be a bit here, so I wish nothing but happiness, prosperity, and blessings for you. So without further ado, I figured what better way to start the year than with a show that actually one of the shows that made this channel was a pro show. So let's get into it. Let's get straight into it. I figured let me bring on one of... If not my my favorite player, let me let me put it to you straight out. This is my favorite midfielder in this PSL right now. Everybody knows this. I am shameless with it, people. Not only plugging the channel, but this is my favorite mid midfielder in the PSL right now. I call him my Thomas Porte. And I actually had to get down and get out my notes to get this man's accolades down. So excuse me while I look down, people. This man has played for the creme de la creme of South African football. My guy has played for Ajax Cape Town, and I call them Ajax because I know right now they're not Ajax, but they were Ajax back then. Sundowns, he's a league winner. Get that in there. Viva Masandawana. Swallows and Super Sport United. He's got 74 DSTV Premiership appearances, six goals, six assists. He's also played for Bafana Bafana at the Under-20 World Cup. He's got eight appearances, two goals, and one goal for Bafana Bafana. My G, the one, the only, Kron. Magaman! What are you telling me, my G? How are you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm good. All good in myself. I'm all right, my G. I couldn't wait. Sorry, I know you didn't expect that intro, but uh, love for coming on, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. And um, yeah, any any thoughts in the beginning that you want to that you want to get out before we dive into it? No, uh, nothing much actually. I'm ready to go, boss. Ready to go, my brother. Okay, look, so first and foremost, um, let me get into it. Um, I know I didn't congratulate you on this at the time because I was waiting for this moment. First, let me congratulate you on a beautiful marriage. Um, I wish nothing but happiness and blessings for you and your wife. May your beautiful union continue to be blessed. And also, happy birthday to your son. Started his first day at Chris yesterday. So onwards and upwards, what a great, what, great start to the year. Yeah, it's been a good start to the year, personally, for myself. Um, yeah. Obviously, now that the family has moved up, um, they're finding a feet at this side. Um, so it's been mm. good for me you know, to have them this side um, to mm. keep me company now. So now True. for me, it's just to make this year a success. Lovely. Can I tell you something, Grant? Can I, before we even dive into can I ask you a question? Um, how difficult is it on you as a footballer with your family, obviously, being in Cape Town at the mm. time before they move up? It's... For me personally, it was probably like very difficult, you know, when I moved up um, at the end towards of 2020 when I joined Sundance. Mm -hmm. It was my first time, you know, moving out of the house. Of course. Uh, moving to another city. So that was quite challenging, challenging for me because now it's like you becoming this man, you know, you're going to have to go and survive on your own. Of course. You're going to have to face all these battles in another city on your own, you know, so mentally you're going to have to be tough. So mm. it was quite challenging for me, you know, so, but I'm glad and I'm happy that I took that step, you know, because in the near future, you know, it helps you, it helps you, it gives you that extra motivation to True. say you doing something, you know, with your family that's back home, watching, supporting you. Of course. So I think it all goes down to how bad you how bad you want it, you know, and how mentally tough you are. Mm -hmm. I can see um, but I can see you look much, much more settled um since your family is there. So kudos to you, my bro. Look, let's get straight yeah. into it. Um, I want to know who is Grant Margaban. What made you fall in love with the beautiful game and who were your idols growing up? So basically I'm just another boy from Bonty, but in Cape Town, you know, from the Cape Fletch. Um I started playing football at the age of Eight, nine, you know, I started having, you know, we were just playing the stage with other boys, you know, on the field, you know, we were just having fun, enjoying the game. And obviously after that, you start having a passion, you know, enjoying the football. Um, all you want to do is kick a ball. And obviously coming up, you know, for me, my father's been always my idol, you know. He's been a uh, man of the house, working, you know, showing me, that obviously also he's also a football lover. 
So I think probably that's also one of the aspects where I also probably love football. And also, and when it comes to, you know, uh, idol, when it comes to football, I think that uh, early idolize Cristiano and all the, you know, mm. because obviously of his mentality, his work, I, um, and because our Manchester United supporter and, you know, he's a legend of the club of the game. Mm. And once I started watching football, he was one of the players that stood out. Also, one of the players that I love and I idolized, but I didn't watch as much, to be honest, was the one and only Zinedine Zizo Zidane. That's my... Ivy, come on! <laughs> so, you know, all time, I haven't watched him, you know, watch that much football, but I always watch these clips on YouTube and all this and look to replicate what he does on the field. So, yeah, mm. basically that's me. Ah, love, love, lovely. I couldn't have summed it up any better. We'll come on to that Manchester United part because I need you guys to do me a favor the weekend, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I heard on good authority um, from somebody who coached you, Henry Puri, uh, Big Abersky, that you started out as a center back and then you moved into midfield. So the question... I want to ask you is, when did that transition start? How difficult was it? And do you think these days, given today's game, more midfielders need to be adaptable in that sense? Yeah, um, I think it was at the age of 13 when uh, when Heinz, um, um coaching partner, came and Paul says, the father, the late key Porter, decided mm-hmm. to make me a uh, midfielder. Because at the age of under 9, 11, Beginning of under 13, I played as a centre back, you know. And even though I'm short now, you know, obviously at that time. That's what, I call it. That's what I couldn't understand. Were you a little Lissandra Martinez or something? What was it? And so, obviously, at that time, I was more or less the same height as the guys. But yeah, it was probably at the age of 13 when the late Keith Paulson moved into the middle. He said, ah, no. He feels that I can offer much more into the middle, you know. I have the, the opening ability, you know, to get out of situations, I also have a vision, you know, for pass, and I can also shoot. So that's when he said, mm. that if I can play in the middle. And obviously, we played this tournament, Stamford in the 13th tournament, which was my first time actually playing in the middle. And I was still well, in our one play of the tournament, and that's where Ajax saw me, you know. For you. So I think it was a good transition for me personally, you know, and I'm going to have to say thank you to you for seeing it. But I think in the modern game, you know, as players, you know, as a midfielder, I think you're going to have to be adaptable, you know, to a few positions. Mm-hmm. And as you can see, like, especially, you know, with midfielders, once they start probably get a bit older, they start, you know, moving to centre-back, you know, because now mm-hmm. you need players that's comfortable on the ball. Because a lot of teams now want to ball up from the back. And I think mm-hmm. that's also one. One of the reasons why some coaches or some teams they use midfielders now at the back. Hmm. True. No facts. I couldn't agree with you more. I want to ask. You've played in a number of positions, and I saw this today actually while I was checking your stats on Transomark. So I've seen you've played as a wing. Transomark have you down as a, like in the positions that you've played? You've played as a wing. You've played as an AM. You've played as a cam. As a DM and as a CM, I want to ask you, what is your favorite position, you personally? What do you see yourself as? Because for me, you're Thomas Partey. For me, you can do whatever. For me, you're Thomas Partey, but what do you see yourself as? For me, personally, I see myself, you know, as a CM, you know, box to box. Okay, okay box to box, okay. Yeah, because I like being on the ball, you know, and also, you know, have that where I can go forward, you know, and look to assist or get one in the net. Mm. Ah, you already got two assists. You don't have to put it in there. I was coming to that, actually. <laughs> okay, so look away from the football. You recently did something um, that stood out for me personally, and which I actually honestly respect. I'm not saying this just because you're my friend and I have you on the show, is that I recently saw a picture of you giving um, Bata Tuffies. Was it Tuffies that you got? Was it Tuffies? Yeah, school shoes. Tuffies to a school. Um why did you do that? And do you think it's important for footballers to give back to their community? Yeah, I think it's always good 
for footballers to give back, just to show that character you know, and also to show that even though maybe for myself at least, you know, it comes from one table, you know, uh, community, you know, with a lot of violence and all of this gangster. To show that even though you come maybe from the Cape Flats, you can still make it as a professional footballer or whatever your mm. goal in life is, you know. So, yeah, that was just something I felt like I needed to do. And obviously with the connection that my agent had with the schools and all that, I felt that let me give back to my primary school, you know, because when I was there, at the age of, I think, 12 or 11, I got the opportunity to go overseas to Norway to, wow. take part in a, to take part in a tournament, you know. And luckily at the time, you know, the school actually helped me, you know, with funds to mm. have some spending money when I went that side. Mm. So it's things like that, you know, we you feel like there's appreciation that they showed you in the past, you know. So now for me, it's just to... So, but the patient back to them, and you know the sir that's now the principal. He was one of my sirs back then, so he was happy, you know, just to see me again. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, and see the so, and for me, it's, to show the young kids, you know, doesn't mean that when you grow up, you have to be a footballer. You have to be the next Mahaman, you just have to show that as a person, you know, you always have to show the next generation that um, once you reach this goal, that you always have to show the younger ones that it's possible for them, you know, to make it also in the future. Facts, true. What impact do you think that had on the kiddies? Were they chuffed to see you? I think some of them were, was excited to see me because obviously on a Weekend basis, they see me, you know, playing PSL. And also, I had this thingy for the past, yo, tuna, where I had this tournament, you know, I was under 11 and 30. I saw that as well. I saw that as well, yeah. Uh, the community, we, we just have it on a youth day in December. So it's quite, so it's like twice a year, you know, in the holidays, school holidays. So mm -hmm. it's just good to see, you know, sometimes where you put a smile on a young kid's face and also mm -hmm. just, Having them there, enjoying what you enjoyed as a young kid also. True. When you have the next one, you must let me know, my brother. You must let me know. Yes, welcome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's drift away from the football and all of that talk. So, we've got seven quick fire questions um, for you. So, I'm going to ask you seven questions and I want you to give it off the top of your head. Just quick, quick. Favorite food? Lasagna. Lasagna. Pasta guy. Yeah. Okay, I'm also a pasta person, but as a footballer, don't you always eat pasta like as a pre-match meal? Yeah, basically, yeah, you know, we have spaghetti. Beef, okay. Beef or, or chicken lasagna? Beef lasagna. Same here, love. Favorite hobby outside of football? Probably just Netflix, you know, watch TV. What's your favorite Netflix series that you're watching now? Huh? Um, at the moment, myself and my wife are watching this Emily in Paris, but nice. my all time favorite, but my all time favorite has to be Money Ice. Brilliant, brilliant. A man with this, I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, I know favorite football team is Manchester United. Why okay. Manchester United? I'll ask you why. I think probably because. Basically, my father is one in like he integrated me, you know, as to supporting United. And I started watching them a lot. And at the time when I was cutting up, there were the team to watch, obviously, the, the one on fires and fires. So, yeah, mm -hmm. probably that's one. Before we go to the next one, I already knew a football team, but um, how do you feel about Ten Hag and what he's doing right now? I think um, he's been doing a Good job, you know, under the circumstances because what I love most about him now is implementing, you know, the discipline on and off the field and he's showing the players that if you're not going to do what he wants from you, you know, or what he expects, you, you're not going to play week in, week out. And I think that's important, you know, to have that stature in the club, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can see it now on the field, you know, some of the guys, they having the confidence, you know, they know what the manager expects from them. And everyone is working on. True. You can see it. I, me personally, as an outsider, I can see it. 
You gonna do me a favor over the weekend? I of course, of course. I hope so. I hope so, my bro. Anyway, um, most memorable moment in and outside of football. I think inside of football is gonna have. I think I have probably like two moments. I think the one has to be the one we I scored in the under twenty World Cup against Japan because mm. I. Because I feel that's probably a stage, you know, where you play against the best under 20 players, you know. Yeah, so that, and obviously the time, the year that I won the league were Romulo de Sundowns because it was my first accolade, you know, a team accolade that I won. So that's the one. And out of football, I think that was probably like one of the proudest moments, you know. It was when I bought my mom a house. So, yeah. As a football, I think that's because that's been always, yeah. you know, on my bucket list or one of my things, you know, to mm. buy my mom. Lovely, man. Lovely. Good answer. If Grand Magaman wasn't going to be a footballer, what career would he have chosen? Uh, to be honest, you know, like growing up, I always had two um, things that I wanted to be. Obviously, football was the number one, but I don't know. Why I had is that when I was on high school, the young guy wanted to be a chef, you know. But I'm quite a more foodie person. Oh, so your so. food is your man, so you cook, so you make the wife the food in the house then? Sometimes I, you know, I jump into the kitchen, you know, I do my thing. So yeah, yeah that's probably <laughs> one of the. Uh, I don't know why. Dish? Your specialist huh? dish. What's your specialist dish? Every foodie, every cook has a special dish that they make in the kitchen. Uh, probably just spaghetti and butter chicken. <laughs> easiest, yeah. no, the easiest yeah, way to go. Keeping it simple. Thanks. Where was I now? Toughest opponent that you first. Uh, okay. I think one game, you know, uh, when we played sundowns. <laughs> It was when they just had to win, you know. I think it was a few years back. I think it was the year after they won the Champions League. But I'm going to have to say, Lompo Kakana. Lompo, Lompo, man, like Lompo, Lompo my man. At the time, you know, I was still probably just getting into the PSL, you know. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. And at the time, he was like a beast in the model, you know. The guy would go with, he would go fits the ball at the defense, he would. Go past people, you know. He would shoot from any angle. Shoot from any angle outside the box yeah. in his own half, wherever you wanted him. Yeah, yeah like not too close to him. The guy would shoot. The and then next moment you will see the coach shouting, "Hey, get close!" <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's probably gonna be because he has this range of passing, you know. Because at the time when they had even Donny passing now, mm. if we if you had time and space on the ball, he would eat his balls into the channels for them, you know, mm. to get on. Mm. Yeah, so that has to be. Now say no more. Let's talk current. Um, season has just started now recently, or I would say the second half of the season. You've got currently two um, assists this season. Um, what are you hoping for personally and for Super Sport this season? For me personally, uh, I actually wanted to, you know, improve my game. Much more when it comes to stats, you know, where I get mm. goals and assists, you know. Because I feel as a midfielder, you're going to have to contribute offensively and defensively, you know, because you're like mm. basically the link for the team going forward and defending. So that's been on my list, you know, to get some more assists and some more goals. And obviously, at the beginning of the season, I spoke to Coach Kevin and, you know, asked him what do you expect from me, you know, and he said that. Mm. This is the amount of goals that he probably wants as a midfielder or that he sees myself getting in the league. Mm. And so, yeah, that, that too has been basically um, what I wanted to achieve because even though, you know, you can have all the skills and all the talent when it comes to playing, you know, have good touches. But in football nowadays, you know, a lot of teams, a lot of coaches, before they... Look to what type of player you are, how do you play, you know. They go and mm. say, 
when you look at the player stats, you when know. You look at the numbers, yeah. Facts. Yeah. That's mm. one, once they see the numbers are good, that's when they say, let me have a look at this player. Let me mm. see what he can contribute, you know, to a team. Mm. Play team effort. So that's been one of the, that too has been what I really wanted to achieve. And regarding Super Sport, you know, I think Super Sport, it's always been a team that's been challenging, you know, for league honors. That's been one of the teams that's say has been challenging. Even though recent years they haven't been probably top four, mm. they've been mostly in the top eight. Um, but they're one of the teams that's always there winning cups. You know, they got under this nickname of, you know, a cup team. Mm. So I think it's good, you know, when you at the team that you know they're going to challenge and they're also looking, you know, to get some silver away because it gives you that extra motivation, you know, to say, let me add some silver away, you know. Of course, of course. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So for me personally, this season, you know, it's just for myself, you know, for the team, you know, to see how far we can get in the league, you know, on the log standings. Um, we actually have been up So for us, it's just to keep on going and to see if we can at least maybe get one cup. Yeah, look, I think, I don't know, your sound is cutting out a bit. Um, just check it out quickly for me before I ask the next question. Just check it out. Could you hear me at the end of it? No, I can hear you now. I could hear the, the end of it. Um, you said one cup. I could, I could get it. Uh, fair enough. Um, I want to ask you, before we jump into the next question, your conversation with Gavin. I can hear you, bro. I can hear you. I can hear you. It's fine. I can hear you. Your, convers yeah, your conversation with Gavin, I don't want to go into the numbers, but how far are you from that goal? In terms of percentage? 50% of the way? 60%, 30%. I can hear you, bro. It's fine. It's cool. I can hear can you. Just if be that again, I couldn't hear you. Okay, that's fine. So you mentioned that you and Coach Kevin had a conversation with regards to um what he expects from you. In terms of percentage, how far away are you from that? Like 50% of the way, 70% of the way to achieving. I don't want to mention stats because now people might hold us to it and whichever. But in terms of you personally, how far away are you from it? I think like 45, 50%. Not bad at all. No, halfway. You know, I think um, we had a bit of a slow start, you know, towards the season. Because I think, mm. you know, in our first five games, we only had like one win and one turn. Mm. So we had a bit of a slow start, but now that we're picking up momentum, you know, the goals and things are coming. So hopefully I can add to the tally. Uh, say no more. Look, let me put it here like this. You might be 13 points off, but you got a game in hand on Sundowns. You beat Sundowns, you win your game in hand at seven points, and there's a title challenge on. Yeah. So another question. Uh, I was, I have a, before we come to the end, I have one favor to ask. Please, man. Don't you just want to get the stomach back before Monday, man? Do it for me. Find <laughs> <laughs> um, injury, man. Find injury. Find injury. You don't need to play against sundowns, man. Let, let it nah, go. I think we can't play Monday. Why not? Because obviously I'm, in, I'm on loan from I'm on the sundown. So basically we have, they have this clause. In Is our... that clause in the PSL? Yeah. Yo, I never knew that. Yeah, so I actually don't want to talk bad about sundowns. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. But basic, but it's a bit. How can I put it? Um, for me as a player, it's mm. not nice, you know, because mm. last season, you know, I could play against them, and now, exactly. and now you see some of the guys that you know that are unknown from sundowns. That is playing against them, but now you know. Against them, but you can't exactly. That's what I'm saying. I never knew about that. That cool. yeah, myself and uh, myself and another two guys. That's also from uh, Sundowns. We can't awesome. play against them. So yeah. I won't say it's bad from them because at the end they're like, your mother club, but it's a bit frustrating, you know. Because mm. on the other side, you want to show, you know, when you play against them that. Like, you want to at least have a part of yourself, you know, mm. and know what you can do against him. Because obviously that is where you want to be. You want to be a part of the champions, you know. Of course. But, yeah, so Monday I'm going to have to 
Yo. Yo, yo, that's a bummer. And I was actually yo, like watching that game literally for you, like to see how you're going to perform. But is that why you didn't play in the first game? Yeah, that's why. Yo, that's a cuck one. Anyway, sorry for my French. Let's come to the closing end, um, Grant. Any advice you would like to give, give to the young kid wanting to be the next um, Grant Magaban? For me, I would just say, you know, stay humble. Um, always work hard, but work smart also, you know. When you have this goal that you want to achieve in life, you know, look for ways, you know, how to achieve your goal. Because sometimes, you know, people is going to say, just always work hard, work hard. But you're going to have to know how to get to your goals, you know, how to unlock them. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's just, you know, whatever you do, you know, you keep on working, but, you know, I have to stay humble, stay disciplined, you know. I think for myself, you know, discipline has been one of the key factors, you know. I'm a person, you know, that doesn't like getting involved in an unnecessary time, you know, as a footballer, you know, I want to keep my page clean, you know, mm-hmm. even though you're going to have days where you're going to do things, you know, on the field, on the field, but they have to keep it as clean as possible. So for just to, you know, keep on working, stay disciplined, you know, listen to your parents and also to make sure that you focus on your schooling because education mm-hmm. is also important. True. Nah, love. Look, you know what I must admit, I don't even realize that 30 minutes have flown by. I want to thank you for taking this time to chat to me. Um, it's been awesome. Um, hopefully, it might not be the last. I want to wish you all the best on and off the pitch. Um, like I said again, you are my favorite midfielder <laughs> in the PSL. Um, but keep doing what you're doing. Um, and yeah, that's all I can say for now, my brother. Love for, love for jumping on, really. I'm absolutely humbled, really. Thanks, man. And thanks for having me. And I hope that the platform you know, expands this year and everything goes well. And it's been a pleasure to be on the show. Love for the love, my brother. But yes, people, there you go. You know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. It's David Boys, Grand Magaban. We are out of here. Bless. AJ. I am the one. I am the one. Everybody duck. My puns on my echo wood.